Hey, it's James from Fin Electrical. On today's video, we've got an intermittent RCD fault. So we're gonna look into that and see what's going on. I'll show you how to do it. Let's get into this. There we go, so we've arrived at the property then. So we're gonna do a bit of fault finding. So we're saying it's RCD, it's tripping occasionally so we'll have to investigate to see what's going on yeah so i'm sitting to the property now then so we've got the fuse guard here so it's been saying this rcd to the left has been tripping so it's got the shower on it's got the sockets first floor downstairs lighting cooker and the central heating so i just want to identify where these are in the property, so we can look into those. But first, what we're going to do is just test the RCD then, just to make sure that's working as it should, because it could be something as simple as that. Before we do the test, then, I'm just going to make sure everything's tight, because I've had it before where there's been loose neutrals, and that's caused it to. Uh, do some funny stuff for the circuit, so I'm just going to test and tighten all the terminals. Be careful with the one wheel on, on the light, and if you over tighten that, you can just snap the earth. So, we're going to be careful with tightening that up. Alright, so turn him on onto the RCD time. There we go. So, it's a normal what, what uh, type this RCD is. So, it's an AC, so we'll change that to AC. There we go. Earth onto there line and neutral will turn these circuits off and then we should get a reading so we've got the earth on line and neutral the outgoing and we'll just press test so i'll test on half times 30 so 15 milliamps it shouldn't trip there we go test at one times it'll trip so 36.7 so anything under 200 passes so what have we got 26.7 then anything under 40 for five times passes 13.3 so that's good there we go 7.4 so that's past RCD so that RCD will trip when it's above 30 milliamps so something is causing that to trip so what we're going to do is test between earth and line and earth and neutral get it on the insulation resistance at 100 volts and then what we'll do is just go through these circuits and just see uh, which it is but we'll have to take the neutral out because obviously the line will run through your circuit through the resistance but down your neutral so we'll have to take the neutral out whilst we test that otherwise we're going to get the the um, neutral to earth readings through this bus bar the blanket test then so that's obviously connected to everything we're in 0.78 so obviously it needs to be over ideally 2 mega ohm so 2 million ohms for it not to trip so there's something going on there so what I'll do is just disconnect these neutrals out for these and see which circuit is causing the 0.7 mega ohm um, reading causing it to trip so with the RCD off and the line out so I've pulled that neutral out for the lighting so I'm just going to bang it on there and test and we're getting there we're greater than 100 if we ramped it up to 500 volts yeah, we're getting greater than 500, so there's nothing wrong with that light circuit. So we'll just move down until we find out which is the issue. Now I'm just pulling out this circuit here, I think it's the cooker or the shower. Um, I'm just going to bang it back on there. So with that out, and I'll test it. So I'm testing between earth and neutral here. We're getting, there we go, greater than 100. So if I test two, this cable, so I think it's the cooker or the shower. I need to have a look at the labelling. Press test now. Let me look. Yeah, we're at 0.79, so it's this cable here. Seeing how you work, knowing that there is in England such a man as you, gives us all a sense of safety and security. God bless you, Mr. Holmes. Yeah, so I just tested the other side, so these circuits here, which weren't tripping the RCD, but just to prove to the customer that um, that these are, are good. So there's no point, if I'm here, I might as well just check it, you know what I mean? It's just courtesy, in it? So, right then, so the issue seems to be this cooker, so there's a cooker switch below me. I've just showed you those bad readings that we're getting then. So, but yeah, with that pulled out, we're getting, uh, it seems to be a neutral to earth problem. So if I do this 100 volts from line to earth, we're getting 1.50 oh, mega ohm. So that's 1.5 million ohms. That's, that's a good reading really. But neutral to earth, um, if you look here, we are getting 0.8 mega ohm. So that will, uh, essentially it's most likely like an element within the cooker. So the customer can 
well, a bit awkward to fault find on a cooker, but ugh, essentially um, there'll be an element within here on the electrical side. Or it could be the, the internals of it, and then there's no, no you can do really. Um, but there'll be an issue within here that's causing it to trip. So, but what we're going to do is just check the cabling from here to the fuse boards, okay? So we can do that by turning off this switch, which will disconnect neutral and earth. Um, and then what we'll do is test from there to there see, and see if it's cleared. Um, and then after that, yeah, essentially it's just pulling this out and trying to test this, this oven. So yeah, I switched off that switch then. So this is just proving that the cabling's fine. So we're getting greater than 100. And then we're going to the line side. We're getting greater than uh, 100 mega ohm. So that's good. Yeah, then so what I'll have to do is just um, potentially pull the oven out, check out the oven to make sure the cable from the isolate to the oven is fine. And then we'll have to investigate into the actual oven itself. Just at the back of the cooker then. So if you look inside here, you'll see a little element with an earth in the middle. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the plate out, we can literally just unplug the earth, which disconnects the earth to that element, and then test it. And if, the, if it clears, it's that element, so you have to plug it back in, and then they'll have to get an appliance guy out just to swap it over. Because it's cheaper to get an appliance guy out to swap the element than uh, us to come back, essentially. Uh, but yeah, we, <clears throat> there's one in, it's obviously where Ross sits, there's one in uh, Dewsbury called Northern Electrics. So we just send them there and they come out. They've got, they've got everything in stock as far as elements and that for every appliance. So they just come and fit it and swap it over. So normally we wouldn't come out to fault find appliances um, just because it's it's more effective just to get like a, an appliance guy out. And not more effective, but more, uh, it's cheaper. So we try and look after customers. But, but yeah, so we need to, obviously that's got an element. We need to find out what else has an element. So it could be just that there's just one oven with one element, and that could be it, and all the rest could be gas. So it's looking that way, but we'll, we'll check out once we take this plate out. So if you look here, we've got two elements. So we've got, um, looks like a little top oven and a bottom oven. So obviously one will be live, going through its resistance. Because all that is, is just an element, just it's just live in. There's a, there's a big resistance that heats up. It goes through its resistance and back down neutral. So that's what that is. Uh, so what we're going to do is, um, um, well, we're going to test to make sure uh, we know which one's live and which one's neutral. So it's obviously neutral to earth is the fault. And then we'll disconnect the earth and see if it clears. Because obviously it's neutral to earth. If we take the earth out, it's not, it's, um, we test to this earth, it'll clear what it, if we've got the right one. If I just bang that on the earth and to line a neutral, yeah, 0.82, so it's still there then. So what I'll do is just disconnect an element at a time. So I'll pull that neutral off, pull the line off, and see if it clears. So obviously, uh, we've got lines of earth. Let's get it on that earth if we can. And there we go. Let's test that. So 1.64, we'll do the same on the other side. 1.65, so it's not the top of an element. So we can uh, put that back together and go on to the next thing. So the best thing to do is just take some pictures if you're going to be unplugging these. So obviously I'm going to film this, but oranges to left, blacks to right. So let's just disconnect that first and test again. So again, this is the top element. So we're testing from that to us. So we're getting 6 million ohms, that's good. That's in better condition than that top oven, isn't it? We're getting like one point somewhere there, won't we? Uh, so let's make sure the earth is right. So I've clipped on the side, but you never know. Let's just clip it on there and just redo that test. But yeah, if we, if, we, uh, if we get in cleared readings and we can ignore that, yeah, so six million ohms. So now we'll pop that back together, do that bottom element, if you can see that at the bottom. Uh, live or neutral, I'm not sure which one this is. So we're getting 2.3 mega ohm. What's this called? 2.3 again. So that seems to be good. I'm just to check where actually are on earth, which we get zero. There we go. So, right then, we'll have to move on to something else. Right, so testing these then. And up here, it could be like an accumulative effect. It could even sometimes add it where it's the grease itself on the oven that builds up kind of bridges between neutral and earth. So but I'm testing now. So this is the neutral block where you put your six mil to the side. You're getting uh, 20 mega ohm, which is obviously well, 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 uh, well, it's a good reading. So you're going to get zero to that. So these elements we're getting 1.72. So this is the lowest one, which is the top oven. And the next one we're getting six mega ohm which is loads and that bottom one we're getting 2.28 so it's either like a, a cumulative effect um it's either like grease 
or you know what I mean, like bridge them to neutral and earth. Sometimes the electrics can travel through that. I've had it where like an arranged cover has been a bit tingly. Um, yeah, so uh, I've, I've just disturbed something. But <clears throat> the lowest reading is that top one. So it could be that if we, if we turn this oven on and it expands and then we test it again, that the readings go really down, causing the acid to trip. So I mentioned about the cumulative effects. Obviously we've got all three uh, ovens in. If I test this now, yeah, 0.85. So all I've done is kicked all three back in. So I think the um, the earth leakage between each one individually wasn't bad, but I think combined it's getting 0.85. So if you take them out, then you get a really good reading. So the best bet with this uh, would be just to replace all three elements, um, which are the bits within the oven that heats up and it should be a brand new element so it shouldn't be leaking to earth, leaking to earth. but essentially yeah, it's just a neutral to earth fault with this um, with the accumulation of three elements kind of adding up to 0.85 so before we get like 6 mega ohm 1.6 and 2 point summit but if you bang all three back in there we go 0.85 so there's something there between there and neutral which is causing the acid to trip so I'll just pop everything back together then so I've just got a picture of the little um, make a model of the oven so I'll have to get that over to the Northern Electrics that appliance shop and they'll be able to come out and swap three elements so together all three individually they were testing fine together it was giving it um, like 0.85 mega ohm so there's obviously something a cumulative effect is giving enough earth leakage to trip the ICD so hopefully if you swap those three out it should fix the issue unless there's some intermittent fault with it which pings on but but yeah everything else is testing out perfect so it's just an issue with the oven that'll do so another fault down then so not too bad really so as you as you, as you saw then so we had to take the neutrals out because uh, it was an rcd fault and um, we were testing uh, basically it's called the insulation resistance test so we was sending a voltage down the cables between the two now you shouldn't generally well you shouldn't get a, a, a result between neutral and earth should you um, but if it's over two mega ohm, then it's not going to blow, is it? So, all one meg, but we're getting like 0.85. So all we did was just go through the neutrals onto the neutral bar, and we just took one out at a time. So I took one out, tested it. If it's greater than well, um, two meg, then it's not going to be tripping your acid when you put stuff through it. So that was free on the lighting. We did the cooker one next, and then that showed 0.8, and all the rest had cleared. So that's how we found that. And then obviously, then we had to go into the cooker. Then identify what was going on with that. Um, so disconnected all three elements, and uh, that cooker was clear. You, you tested each element individually. You're getting like two meg, one meg, and six meg. Um, but yeah, if you plug them all in together, the accumulative effect it will give you 0.8 mega ohm leakage to earth so if they don't want to replace it best bet is just to replace all three elements and hopefully it works but there could be an intermittent fault with that oven just that we haven't seen but all we can do is tell them what we can see when we come out and uh, test right yeah, then so that's us done for today if you like this kind of content hit the like button hit subscribe hit the little bell notification so you know when we next upload as always have a good one from me and i'll see you on the next one now, if you don't mind i've had rather a strenuous day i i think i'll turn in of course. Good night. Good night.